Assalamu alaikum viewers, welcome to virtual university. I hope you have been enjoying uh, the English lessons. Today we are going to, we are going to look at presenting information graphically through a flow chart and we will follow the usual pattern. Flow charting, this is what the text is about. So far we have dealt mainly with computers, but now it is imperative that we find out how a program is written. In all activities involving computers, it is necessary that the programmer is aware of what the machine is doing and what a program is supposed to do. As previously mentioned, flow charting is one of the steps in programming. It indicates the logical path the computer will follow in executing a program. It is a drawing very much like a road map. Flow charting is not restricted to the preparation of programs in a particular language and should be done for each major problem before the writing of the program is attempted. If the finished program does not run as it should, the errors are more easily detected on the flow chart than in the maze of words, characters and numbers that make up the computer program. In order to develop a flow chart successfully, a programmer should be aware of the sequence of steps needed to obtain a correct solution to a problem. There are two ways of making a flow chart, the freehand version and the neater more readable version. In the former version, the graphic outlines are simply jotted down as the steps of the program are worked out. This is quite satisfactory if the flow chart is not intended to be kept as a permanent record. However, if a permanent, neater and more readable flow chart is needed, the latter, the latter method whereby a template, a sheet of plastic with all the flow charting symbols cut into it is used. The following symbols should be used for the purpose of uniformity. The first and last symbol is in the form of a rectangle. This is a terminal symbol which indicates the beginning or the end of a program. The word start must be inserted inside the figure if it is the beginning of the program and stop if it is the end of the program. The figure in the form of a parallelogram is used as an input or output symbol. It indicates that something is either brought to or taken from the program. The rectangular symbol stands for processing and indicates a place in the program where action is taken. In a program, to indicate that a decision has to be made, the diamond shaped symbol is used. The decision is usually in the form of a question that must be answered by either yes or no. Finally, the arrows are used to show that the flow or direction in which the different actions in the program are performed. It should be noted that flow chart is not a program, but only a step in the preparation of a program and is used in determining how to step up and write the program. However, if the problem is not understood, 
neither the flow chart nor the program can be done correctly. It is possible for two programmers working separately to write programs to solve the same problem and come up with flow charts and programs that may be altogether different. After a program, program has been worked out, it is usually written down and kept with a copy of the flow chart along with the detailed instructions for use and interpretation of the program. This procedure is part of what is referred to as program documentation. If documentation isn't available, it is always possible to work backwards and make a flow chart from an application program. It may be necessary to create a new flow chart when the original one is missing in order to understand the program for which it was a preparatory step. Flow charting is one of the first things a student programmer is taught because a flow chart shows how a person thinks about a problem. In other words, it is through this that a new programmer reveals his or her logical and analytical ability, which is a must in programming. Now that was a very different text from the usual text that you have read so far. Again, we will do a couple of exercises dealing with reading comprehension. Which statement of the three that I shall read out expresses the main idea of the text? And then you will have to justify why you eliminated the other choices. The three statements are, number one, every programmer must know how to flow chart. Every programmer must know how to flow chart. Is this the main idea of the text? Number two, program documentation specifies what the program is supposed to do. Number three, flow charting is a basic step in programming. Flow charting is a basic step in programming. Now out of these three, which one which statement expressed the main idea? Now, uh, choice number one and two are both details. It is number three. Flow charting is a basic step in programming. That statement expresses the main idea of the text. The text want, the main idea is that flow charting and as you know the, uh, the, the title of the passage was also flow charting. So flow charting is a basic step in programming that is what the text is actually saying. Now uh, the second exercise on comprehension again a number of statements will be given you and you have to decide which one is true and which is false. You do this by referring to the text and then you will have to make necessary changes so that the false statement becomes true. Statement number one, a good flow chart takes into account the steps which are necessary to solve the problem. A good flow chart takes into account the steps which are necessary to solve the problem. Is this statement true or false? It is a true statement. Right. Number two, it is not possible to draw a flow chart without using a template. It is not possible to draw a flow chart without using a template. That is a false statement. 
how can we make it true? We can make this into a true, true statement, we can convert this by saying that it is possible to draw a flow chart freehand. It is possible to draw a flow chart freehand and that would be a true statement. Number 3, there is only one possible flow chart for every problem. There is only one possible flow chart for every problem. Now, did the text say that? No, not at all. And how can we make convert this into a true statement? We can do it by saying that there is more than one possible flow chart for every problem. There is more than one possible flow chart for every problem. Statement number 4. Every programmer must learn flow charting and realize its importance. Every programmer must learn flow charting and realize its importance. True or false? It is a true statement. Number 5. The method of flow charting depends on the programming language being used. The method of flow charting depends on the programming language being used. Now, is this statement true or false? It is a false statement. And how can we make it convert it into a true statement? We can say that the method of flow charting depends on the logical, on the logic of the programmer, right? Number 6, flow charts show the logic one has to follow to solve a problem. Flow charts show the logic one has to follow to solve a problem. This is a true statement. Number 7, documenting a program is essential in explaining what the program is supposed to do. Documenting a program is essential in explaining what the program is supposed to do and that is a true statement. Number 8, if the flow chart is correct, the program will certainly work. If the flow chart is correct, the program will certainly work. This is not correct. We can say that a correct flow chart and proper coding will ensure that the program will work. A correct flow chart and proper coding will ensure that the program will work. So, number 8 was a false statement and we converted it into a correct one. Number 9, each symbol in flow charting has a specific meaning. Each symbol in flow charting has a specific meaning. Correct. That is a true statement. And the last statement, flow chart can show processes but not decisions. Flow chart can show processes but not decisions. No, that is not true. Flow charts that is a false statement. Flow charts show processes, show processes as well as decisions. Flow charts show processes as well as decisions. So, let us move on to uh, locating information. Look at the text and see where this information is located. Number 1, 
a programmer must document his program in order that others may be able to understand it. A programmer must document his program in order that others may be able to understand it. And this you will find in paragraph 5. Have you found it? Right. Number 2. Flow charting resembles a map. Where in the text do you come across this statement? Flow charting resembles a map. And this is right at the very beginning in paragraph 1. The next one, number 3. Flow charting shows the logical ability of a programmer. Flow charting shows the logical ability of a programmer. And this occurs in paragraph 6. Have you found it? Number 4. There is more than one way of flow charting. There is more than one way of flow charting. And this information you will find in paragraph 2. Number 5. A certain symbol is used to indicate if a question is to be answered yes or no. A certain symbol is used to indicate if a question is to be answered yes or no. And this information you will find in paragraph 3. Have you located it? Now let us look at an exercise in which you find out what the words in bold type refer to. It is a contextual reference exercise. Number 1. Look in paragraph 1 for the phrase does not run as it should. Does not run as it should. Now what does it refer to? There is a word over there which means the same as it. It is a substitute for that word and that word is program. Number 2 in the former version look in paragraph 2 in the former version what does the word former refer to? It refers to freehand version the freehand version. Number 3 again looking at paragraph 2 look for the phrase this is quite satisfactory this is quite satisfactory. What does this refer to? This refers to jotting down graphic outlines. This refers to the phrase jotting down graphic outlines. Instead of writing jotting down graphic outlines again, the word this has been used. Number 4 the latter method. Again paragraph 2. Look in paragraph 2 for this phrase the latter method and what is latter? Latter is the neater readable version. Number 5. Flow charting symbols cut into it. Flow charting symbols cut into it. It. Look for the word it same paragraph, paragraph 2 and what does it refer to? It refers to the sheet of plastic used, the sheet of plastic used. Number 6, which indicates the beginning? Now move on to paragraph 3, the next paragraph and look for the phrase which indicates the beginning and what does the word which refer to? Which refers to the symbol. Number 7, same paragraph, look for the phrase 
it indicates that something, it indicates that something. What is it? It refers to figure. It is that figure that indicates something. Number 8, move on to the next paragraph, paragraph 4 and look for the phrase that may be altogether different, that may be altogether different and what does that refer to? It refers to flow charts and programs. Number 9, the original one is missing. Move on to the next paragraph, paragraph 5 and look for the phrase the original one is missing. What is one? What is one referring to? It is referring to the word flowchart. And the last one in paragraph six, 6, look in paragraph 6 for the phrase which is a must in programming. Which is a must in programming? and which refers to logical analytical ability, logical analytical ability. Now, we will uh, do the vocabulary exercise. Look at the text and find synonyms. Find, in paragraph five, 1, look for a synonym for the word root root. The synonym for root is path. Paragraph 1, look for a word which is, which can be a synonym for the word try and the word is attempt. Again, in the same paragraph, look for a word which is a synonym of the word answer. What is the answer? The answer and the word you have over there is <coughs> solution. And paragraph 3, look for a word which is a synonym of the words put in. When you put in something, you missed out few words and you put them in, what do you do? Another word. Another word for put in is insert. When you insert a few words in a sentence. All right, and number five, move on to paragraph six and look for a word which is the same in meaning as the word show. And the word would be reveal. You have a word over there in paragraph six which the word reveal, which means the same as the word show. Now look at antonyms. Paragraph 1, there is a word over there which is the opposite of the word unlimited. Unlimited means something which does not have any limit, no boundaries. And there is a word which is the opposite of unlimited. And the word there is particular. The word is particular. In paragraph 1, there is a word which is the opposite in meaning of the word undiscovered and the word is detected. In paragraph 2, look for a word which is the opposite of the word temporary. You have it there in your text in paragraph 2, a word which is the opposite of the word temporary and the word is permanent. Permanent is the opposite of temporary. Detected is the opposite of undiscovered. Particular is the opposite of unlimited. Move on to paragraph 5 and look for a word which is the opposite in meaning to inaccessible inaccessible, something that you cannot reach. You have a word in paragraph 5 which is the opposite of inaccessible and the word is available and something that you can reach out, reach out to, something that is 
available. And in paragraph 6, there is a word which is the opposite of illogical. The opposite of illogical is logical. So, that was vocabulary exercise. Now, another exercise, the usual one, uh, word forms. You will find a number of words given and you have to choose the appropriate form of the word to complete the sentence. Now, the word here is involve. You have got words like involve, involved, involving, involvement. A, sentence A, in most operations dash calculations, computers can do the job much faster than man and the suitable word is the suitable form of involve is involving in most operations involving calculations right b flow charting dash a logical analysis of a problem and a diagrammatic representation of the sequence of events to be followed in solving the pro problem and the word is involves. See the dash of the new programmer in the users group was appreciated by his manager. And the word, the correct word would be the involvement of the new programmer in the users group was appreciated by his manager. The next group of words are correction, correct, corrected, corrective, correcting. And the first sentence, sentence A, it is always a good approach to errors in your program before running it with the data. And the suitable form is correct. It is always a good approach to correct errors in your program. Right? Sentence B, in order to develop a good flow chart, a programmer should be aware of the sequence of steps needed to obtain a solution to a program to a problem and the suitable word over there is correct you had correct in the last one and you have correct again in sentence b sentence c now which version which form of the word correct would be suitable in number 3. He submitted the dash version of the program to be key punched and here it is the corrected. He submitted the corrected version of the program. Right? And the next group of words is process, processed and processing. Sentence A, the central dash unit is responsible for executing the programs. The central processing unit, right? B, a block diagram can show if a dash has to be repeated or if there are alternative routes to be taken. And the correct word over here is process. A block diagram can show if a process has to be repeated. Sentence C, the applications of the new students were dashed by the computer, were processed. You have got the hint, there is that verb were. So, it is were processed. The fourth group of words are performance, perform, performed, performing, performer. Sentence A, a dash is a verb used quite often in COBOL programming and the word is, and the verb is perform. Perform is a verb used quite often 
in COBOL programming. Sentence B, data processing refers to the operations which are dash on the data either to derive information from them or to order them in files and the correct form is performed. Sentence C, the dash of the computer salesman was measured by the number of units he sold. The and the word to fill in in sentence C is the performance, the performance of the computer salesman. Now uh, number 5, the, the fifth group of words, documentation, document, documented, documenting. Sentence A, dash a program is essential so that the other programmers can understand it. And the word is documenting a program is essential so that other programmers can understand it. B, it took the programmer one week to complete the dash of the programs in the new system. And the correct word is documentation. The first A was documenting, B is documentation. And number C, the payroll package we purchased is very well dash and the correct word is documented. The payroll package we purchased is very well documented. Right. Now, uh, next we will review the contents that you read. Now, just tr try to remember, try to think of a definition for each of these items you will see in the box in the word, uh, word bank. Complete the following statements with the appropriate words and just make sure that you are using the correct form, the singular or plural and you find that you have got seven words in the word box and the words are ex executing, template, documentation, terminal, parallelogram, rectangle, diamond. Sentence 1, the information describing what a program can do and what a program uh, and what the results mean is referred to as, choose the word and the word, the suitable word is documentation. Number 2, it is advisable to test the program without data before executing it. 3. A piece of plastic with different shapes used for flow charting is called a out of the choices the correct word is template. Number 4. Data used as input must be indicated with a and if you remember the symbols, it is a parallelogram. Number 5, the symbol which marks the beginning and the end of a program is called the what symbol? The terminal symbol. Right? Now, you have a paragraph and you fill it out based on the flow chart that you can see. This paragraph is based on the flow chart that you can see. Fill in the blanks with the proper connectives. It is a very easy exercise. You just have to use the words that are given. In calculating an employee's salary, a computer must go through a number of operations in a logical manner, right? It must read the number of hours worked and the rate of pay for each hour. Now out of those words given you, which one would you choose? Since this is the first one, the
the first gap that has to be filled. Is there any word over there which in, in, in the uh, choices that you have before you that there is a clue over there, there is a phrase. Yes, it is the phrase to begin with, the word to begin with, begin is the clue. So, you use that to fill in the first gap. To begin with, it must read the number of hours worked and the rate of pay for each hour worked. The next gap is to be filled with the word and the word is next, a then. Then it must calculate the gross salary and look at what comes after the gap. After the gap you have words multiply the hours worked by the by the rate of pay that, which means that he that the paragraph is uh, explaining. So, are there any is there any phrase over there in the given words that elaborates what is said then it must calculate the gross salary that is that is the word that is is used to explain things that is multiply the hours work the hours worked by the rate of pay for each hour worked look at the next sentence doing these two operations it must find out whether what word do you think what connective would be proper over here you have used then so it has to be after after doing these two operations it must find out whether the employee has worked overtime or not right look at the next sentence dash he has not worked over time the computer points prints out the so it has to be if he has not worked out over time the computer prints out the gross salary and look at if you keep reading you will notice that if the employee has worked overtime, now this is a contrast. So, you will use the word but, if he has not worked overtime, the computer prints out the gross salary, but if the employee has worked overtime, two more operations are necessary, dash printing out the gross salary, that is before printing out the gross salary. What does he do? First, the overtime pay must be calculated and then if you keep reading, you will notice again, he is saying the paragraph is saying the same thing, but in other words. So, use the phrase in other words to fill in the gap. In other words, the number of overtime hours must be multiplied by the overtime rate of pay. And now you have got two gaps to fill in. The overtime is added to the gross salary. So, what can you have over there? You can have the word next. Next, the overtime pay is added to the gross salary. And the last one, very easy, what is it that comes at the end? It is usually the word finally. Finally, the computer prints out the employee's salary and stops. The next exercise is, uh, uh, is a focus on language functions and read uh, the text flow charting and complete the table that you have before you. Uh, it has two columns, one is column, one is column, uh, one is marked cause and the, the other is marked effect. 
Now, there is something given in paragraph 1. One part is the cause and the other is the effect. In this table, you will find that in some places the effect is given and you have to look for the cause. In others, the cause is given you and you have to look for the effect. And if you remember, uh, the words for uh, cause, the markers are if and because. So, if you know, if you remember those, it will be easier for you to locate the information. In paragraph 1, uh, the cause is given you. If the finished program does not run as it should, what is the effect? Look for the words. The correct words are the words that show the effect of if the finished product. The words are the errors are more easily detected on the flow chart. Number two, the effect is given you. This is quite satisfactory. What is quite satisfactory? This is the effect. You have to look for the cause. Look for a statement that begins with the word if and that is if the flow chart is not intended to be kept as a permanent record. Uh, the second half of number two, uh, here the effect is given you, the latter method is used. Look for the cause and the cause is if a permanent neater and more readable flow chart is needed, the latter method is used. Right. Number 3. Again, number 3 is in two parts. The cause, you have to look for the cause in one and you have to look for the effect in the other. In uh, the first one, the effect is given you. The word start must be marked inside the figure. Right? This is the effect. What is the cause? The cause is if it is the beginning of the program. And in the same way, in the second half, the cause is given you. If it is the end of the program, then the effect would be stop must be inserted inside the figure. Number four, number four, you have the effect given you and you have to work out the cause. Right? I am sure you can complete this on your own. It is not a difficult exercise. And with that, we come to the end of today's lesson. I hope you can complete this on your own. See you next time. Allah Hafiz.